EU ministers met on Monday with cracks already beginning to show in that wall of unity that they seem to have forged with unprecedented sanctions against Russia in recent weeks. Now, countries like Poland and the Baltic states had gone into that meeting calling for an outright oil embargo as a next step to ramp up the pressure on the Kremlin over its invasion of Ukraine. However, other countries, particularly countries like Germany, have been very resistive to that, and that's because they're heavily reliant on Russian energy imports. Now, German ministers have also warned of the catastrophic impact that that could have if there was an embargo immediately, with talks of mass unemployment and also poverty as a result of that. So they have wanted to sway away from this idea of an outright oil embargo. There might be a little bit of sanction fatigue setting in. Josef Borrell, this is the EU's foreign affairs chief, said that energy was being weaponized, but it just wasn't the right day to make a concrete move on this. Ministers analyzed the situation and decided uh, to continue and taking decisions. Today was not the moment to take concrete decisions but to have a look at where we are. All member states remain extraordinarily united in supporting Ukraine. We will continue isolating Russia to call out for war crimes, a war crime, a massive war crime committed by the Russian armed forces against Ukrainian people. And this cannot go unanswered. Earlier on Monday, the Kremlin had said that Europe would be hard hit by an embargo on Russian oil. And there were suggestions uh, that had that been announced, that Moscow would have been ready with its own retaliation. And that, some have suggested, could have been to close a gas pipeline to Europe. To give you a sense of how important that would be, the EU relies on around 40% of its gas from Russia. So such a measure would would have really hit the EU pretty hard. However, the meeting of EU ministers did achieve one specific goal. They approved the strategic compass. This is a block-wide common defence strategy that would create an EU rapid deployment force of around 5,000 soldiers. It was a historic first for the bloc. It's a plan that's been in motion for many years, but while some have suggested that this could be a move towards an EU army, which is favoured among some European leaders like President Macron of France. That is not what it is, said Borrell. It's not about creating a European army, but we have to work together closer. We have to coordinate better our expenditure. We have to be able to react. And one of the ways to react rapidly is this rapid deployment capacity that has been agreed. We will conduct uh, live exercises together. It has never been happening, never. And we will better tools to fight hybrid attacks, hybrid campaigns, cyber threats, and foreign interference and manipulation of information. Because the battlefields of tomorrow are also on the networks, is conquering minds of the people. So there's a big work to do, not with guns, but with words, with ideas. The plan has been in place for some time, but it does seem as if the crisis, the conflict in Ukraine, has given EU members a sense of urgency to finally put this plan into action. And Josef Borrell was very stern when he described the need for this, saying, our neighbourhood is in flames. There are a circle of challenges and we have to face them.